YouTube, team keep it clean What's going on, it's Angraven Raven here with another episode of NFL Questions from Subs Where you can ask me any question and we answer it in the video just like this You want to be part of it, send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com Or for the patrons, y'all can send it directly on Patreon Team keep it clean, got some great questions like we always do Let's not waste no more time Our first question came from my boy Nick Brick And appreciate you being a patron He said, Engraven, my guy, I tried my best to refrain from asking a Lamar contract question But people have me confused why is everyone acting like Lamar has to sign a deal right now like he's the one in trouble? Even if he gets injured, we saw the bone sticking out of Dak Prescott's ankle on live TV and they still dropped the bag. However, from my views, the Ravens have to sign him this offseason. The cap went up 25 mil this season and will only get larger with the new TV deals, especially the Amazon one kicking in this year. Rodgers is going to get 50 mil and already reset the market and it's only going to get worse. Plus... There is no way the Ravens should go into 2022 season with Lamar's fifth year option cap hit when we could clear up another decent chunk of cap space by signing him to an extension. This season is our last chance to go all in while on Lamar's rookie deal. For a team that prides itself on not being irresponsible with the cap space, the last four years we never have any due to dead cap from bad deals, injuries, uh, Earl Thomas and COVID. Uh, from my views, the Ravens should do everything to sign Lamar this offseason. Even a $48 million deal would be a steal considering where the business of the NFL is going. I made this a bit too long, but who do you think is more incentivized or desperate to get a contract done this offseason? And also, just wanted to add that it is not Lamar's job or the fans' job to manage the cap. Uh, Lamar can want as much money as he wants, and we can tweet about all the free agents we want. Oh, I love that part. It's probably my favorite part about the whole thing. We could end the video right here after that. Um, but who is more incentivized to get a deal done? Oh, no, no, no. He said who is more incentivized or slash desperate to get a contract done this season? Oh, that's all the Ravens. That's all the Ravens. Because you answered that question in that the bonus part that you put in, that it is not Lamar's job to manage the cap. It's not. His job is to play quarterback for the Ravens. His job is not to be a cap specialist. His job is not to work around the salary. No, no, no. His job is to play quarterback for the Ravens and get his bread. It is the Ravens job to manage the Ravens cap. And with them, Lamar's not the one who has to spend money out of his own pocket to bring in free agents, sign draft picks, trade for this guy, that. No, that's the Ravens. And with Lamar going from making 1 mil, 1.5 mil, 1.7 mil, for, for, for him to go to those cap hits to a $23 million cap hit, you know that, that Ravens, they, they definitely want to get something done. And I, I think the biggest reason for them wanting to get something done um, is so they can alleviate a good chunk of that cap space so they can have some more wiggle room. But I still don't think it happens this offseason. Next question came from another patron, my guy Olu. He said, good day, sir. Hope all is well. I'm seeing a lot of offensive linemen being released. What do you think about grabbing an offensive guard and maybe a center in free agency? I, I would for the center. Yeah, I could see that a guard. Uh, I, I like Ben Cleveland. I, I like Ben Cleveland. I know he got to get a little more of. Better with his hips and his footwork or whatever, but I think Ben Cleveland like will put us in a good direction, and I think he can help a, a ton uh, in the run game. And for him to go in, if he went into this off season knowing like, all right, I'm the starter, that would do him wonders because he would be working with the offensive line from the starting offensive line from jump, and so he could be working on his craft from jump as a number one guy. Uh, and not just as a depth guy. And we know last year, like in training camp and stuff, he had some injuries. He had some uh, concussions and stuff. So he was like back and forth. Um, so I would, I, I would like to roll with Ben Cleveland. But anyway, continuing. Uh, he said, so and using the draft to get younger defensively on all three levels. I've been looking at the young man, Mark, Mark, oh, Mark, Mark Cusis. Marcusis Bell, a strong safety from FAM. Uh, he's six two and ran a four four. All of my mock drafts. <laughs> he said in all of my mock drafts, I grab him in the fourth round. LOL. But uh, if Ravens grab him, that'll give us a big body safety for the future. But can he cover? That's the big thing. Can can he cover the field? Cause we got a big. We well, we had a big body safety in Deshaun Elliott. 
we had that, but like it's not all about the size for the safety and really for any player. Um, but it's about what they can do. But if he can ball, he can ball no matter how short or tall you are. Uh, he said, uh, Tariq Woolen from UTSA, he's a tall and fast DB in the later rounds if we can't get Westry back. And I, I think they'll end up getting Westry back. They didn't tend to him, but I think they'll bring him back, but we'll see. We need that offensive line to be vets, I think, and just go young on defense. Try to maximize Lamar with experienced players protecting him up front. So next year when we break the bank for Lamar, we grab young guys for the offensive line. Tell me what you think. Now, with that, um, if they, like right now, if they go veterans for offensive line, um, and, and do this with what you were saying And then next year They grab young guys when they break the bank for Lamar Wouldn't you want um, Some consistency uh, Well, As long as the offensive line This year would be good uh, But wouldn't you want some consistency for Lamar Jackson uh, Especially if you're about to break the bank on him If that's going to be your quarterback If you're going to pay him all that money You want to build the best around him uh, So if they just got veterans this year And then next year like alright we're going young and then completely just switched it. That inexperience, it, it could it could hurt. It could go good too now. Uh, unless the way that you're talking about is actually doing like a mix. A mix of both. To where they sign some veterans for a couple years and whatnot. But then next year they draft offensive, more offensive linemen just for the future. So if that's what you're saying, I, I, I could see that too. Um, and he said, as always, love what you're doing. Thank you for giving <laughs> this guy, man. And thank you for giving us Crazy Ravens Fanatics a platform to get our thoughts out. LOL. Appreciate you, Olu. Oh, and then a little bonus from Olu. He's talking about Jordan Davis. He said that he is a monster. Did you watch the combine? At 341 pounds, he ran a 4.76 with a 1.68 10-yard split time, which is crazy because J.J. Watt's 10-yard split was 1.71. Uh, Davis is very is very quick off the ball, and that's the big part of his game that I love, that pressure up the middle. T.J. Watt ran a 4.67 with a crazy 10-yard split of 159 at 252 pounds, and Davis is not Cody. <laughs> you talking about Mount Cody. Uh, and I think that's what we are worried about. Oh, and just for reference, J.J. Watt was 292 pounds and ran a 4.91 in the 40. If Davis is there, he should be a Raven because if we don't pick him, he will be crazy in Buffalo or New England. Or oh, a lot of people talking about Chargers, too. Uh, cause they just He has sent this before the Chargers traded for Khalil Mack. But them having interior pressure and exterior pressure would do wonders. Uh, he said, I can really see us doubling up in the first two rounds to have two players on that five-year deal. Ten picks are great, but five picks that are plug-in starters are better. Love it. Love it. Love it. That's perfect. Uh, he said Davis and Penning or Davis and Cross. If Davis is gone, then maybe we can grab the defensive tackle from UConn. He had a great combine, too, and a crazy senior bowl. Um, but then he said, oh, my fault. I just watched a Jordan Davis video, but I had to get my thoughts out. I hope all is well your way. Appreciate you for the bonus content, my friend. Next question came from my boy, Big Drizzy. He said, hey, good morning, Engraven. Hope you and the fam are doing good. Big news last night. My question is, how do you feel about the Ravens releasing Tavon Young? Or do you think they will re-sign him later? Or will another team grab him up? He's a great corner and will be missed for sure. Thanks for all your hard work and stay blessed. I appreciate that. Um, I think, well, obviously all of those are possibilities. But I think there would be a, uh, a market for sure uh, for Tavon Young. Um, I think somebody could end up signing him to like a, a one-year deal, something like that, uh, just to see. Because he's shown, like, when, when he's on the field, he can play. He can play for sure. Uh, but just your biggest your biggest question is uh, injury. That's it. Biggest question is injury. Can he tackle? Yeah. Can he cover? Yeah. Is he going to get beat sometimes? Yeah, but everybody get beat sometimes. But Tavon Young is a good player. Uh, good slot corner. Um, and he can give you, what's the word? He can give you peace of mind there uh, as an inside corner. Uh, and that can just help you out so much. But I do still think right now there's a chance that Ravens could bring him back at a, at a reduced rate, at a cheaper deal. Even though they did give him the, the goodbye videos. So that's something to think about, too. They gave him the goodbye videos. Oh, thanks for everything, Tavon Young. Um, so we'll see. But because usually when they do that, then it's, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, they did that with Tony Jefferson, too, though. But at the same time, um, well, he ain't come back for a couple years later. So with, with Tavon... Um, now that I think about it out loud, maybe he won't be back 
at least this year. This, this is always a chance to let any chance no more. But I think Tavon Young will definitely have a market. Next question came from my boy Chris from the West Wing. He said, Engraven, do you think the Seahawks may come a knocking for a trade with the Ravens for Tyler Huntley? He's still on his rookie deal. And what do you think the Seahawks would offer? Oh, because Seahawks just traded away Russell Wilson. Um, so they are in the QB market right now. They do have a what? A Drew Drew Lock. Um, now that would be something. But if they were to try to take Tyler Huntley away from the Ravens, I, I still don't know if he's eligible to be traded right now. But if he is, then I think they would offer something like uh, I think they would start low, like a fourth round pick. See what Ravens are talking about. I don't think Ravens would take that though. I think uh. For Tyler Huntley, um, if the Ravens were going to trade him, I think they will want something like along the lines of a second round pick. Now, I know some people may initially think like, wait a minute, like, no, Tyler Huntley is not worth a second round pick. A lot of people, when you hear that, uh, but then at the same time, like they, they will be trying to get a, a, their possible starting quarterback. And he's on a super cheap deal right now. So, and Ravens, they don't have like, what, what would be the incentive for Ravens trading him? He's a, he's a good backup quarterback. Um, so with that being said, uh, I think Ravens, they know that they're in a good situation right now with obviously with their starter, um, and with their backup as well. So why would you give that away, especially for cheap? That's why I think <clears throat> the conversation would start, uh, at a second round pick and change. Next question came from my boy, Cayenne. He said, Hey bro, hope all is well. It's Cayenne. Just wanted to get your take on this. People say Lamar had a bad year and I understand he had a ton of picks this year. Like, yeah, li literally a ton. Oh, no, not a ton. I was thinking of a dozen because a dozen is 12, but a dozen and one. But anyway, um, he said he said uh, he did have a, a ton of picks this year by his standard. But why aren't people understanding that Lamar was on pace for 4,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards? He only needed to average 160 passing yards a game and 33 rushing yards a game. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this has never been done. And people just brush it under the rug or take it for granted. Uh, we were one game or we won one game when Lamar hasn't played and people want to run him out of town as if he's Sam Darnold or Baker Mayfield. I don't understand. Oh, yeah. I, I don't get it either. Now, Lamar, yeah, he, he threw like feel like he threw more picks this year than he's thrown like all ever since he's been playing. Um, but now nah, this year it was a little bit off. But at the same time, really, everything was off with this year for the Ravens. But with Lamar Jackson, for me, I just felt like it was one of those things. While his game like we've been spoiled from Lamar Jackson and just his incredible play he's done some just crazy things in such a short period of time and I, I think uh, he has been like sort of a, a prisoner of his own success um and, and since he had been so successful and just broken so many records made so many crazy plays it's like when he doesn't do all the craziness on a consistent basis it's like hold up what's wrong with Lamar Jackson so it, that, that's how a lot of people can feel um, and I can understand why, because we're just so used to all the madness. We're so used to all the craziness. So when it's when it simmers down a bit, it's like, hold up, what's this? But I was one of those people that was thinking, and you just knew, like, that whole little slump that he was in, it was not going to last forever. It wasn't going to last forever. He he wasn't playing Lamar Jackson football. And I said it, that he was injured. You could clearly see that this dude... He was injured before his bone bruise injury. He was injured way before that. Um, so he, you could tell he was just off, man. Just off. Um, so we, it makes us look forward to next year uh, that much more. Next question came from my guy Clout. He said, what's up, Engraven? Wanted to ask, what would be your opinion if the Ravens used Devin DuVernay to a similar role as Debo Samuel from the 49ers? No, he, he's not Debo Samuel. Uh, and he doesn't need to be. Um, I feel like he a better thing for him would be somebody like Percy Harvin. Um, Devin, well, Percy Harvin was a little bit quicker than Devin Duvernay, but just them using him a lot in the screen game, uh, just really trying to get him into open space to where he can make something happen. He could just take off, uh, cause Devin Duvernay, he sort of reminds me of a bigger, um, more like sort of thicker Chris Moore. Um, and the reason I say that is because that the straight line speed is there. He's not too, like, shifty. He ain't, like, shaking nobody, making anybody miss like that. At least not from what I've seen. But um, that straight line speed is there. So if you could use him in a role, like, similar to a Percy Harvin, 
um, then I, I think that would be the best role for him. Uh, but he said, I think he could match well in the same kind of role since he's agile and has a good change of direction. Plus, I think it would help g -Roy explore his vault. Uh, that's it, man. Love your content. Appreciate it, Clout. Next question came from my guy, Ejon. He said, Baltimore fans, I hope all is well with you and yours. I'm good, too, besides paying five fifty a gallon for gasoline. LOL. Sammy Watkins is the topic today. Why not bring him back? He'd be cheap. He's still young and not a locker room cancer in any way. Most importantly, in the clutch, he got open and made plays. Mm. Sammy Watkins, he would be cheap. He can catch. Um, he can still run, but the, the the same issue with Sammy Watkins. Um, the reason for me personally that I didn't want them to just sign Sammy Watkins and be done at wide receiver uh, was the same issue that happened with him with the Chiefs. It was the same issue that happened with him when he was with the Bills. He is not a bad receiver by any means, but the injury history is that's it. It's the injuries, man. The injuries, and it was the same thing this year with the Ravens. He got he just wasn't available like that. He wasn't available like that. And it seemed like when he finally did come back, it seemed like he just he was never the same. So I would say no. But let's continue. He said injuries. Oh, I should have read it. He said injuries are always a concern. But remember the trio of Watkins, Bateman and Hollywood. We barely got to see. So why not be patient and build on last year instead of starting over yet again? We need to add to our unit, not subtract. Uh, and also, it was sad to see him and Bateman score their first touchdowns after week 10. Ooh. Have patience instead of uh, falling into this instant gratification era. Bring Watkins back, in my opinion. What are your thoughts? No, don't bring Watkins back. Um, don't. Mm -mm. Uh, you can you can still it doesn't even have to be necessarily instant gratification. But if they drafted somebody else. Um, big playmaking type of guy, aggressive wide receiver, which I do think they'll take in the first three rounds. I keep saying that. Um, if they did that, I feel like it will be adding to it. And you draft somebody with, with good, good history health-wise too. Because again, with Sammy Watkins, are you really adding by, or are you really, are you really taking away by not re-signing him? Are you really taking away from the Ravens? Because again, he was here, he was signed last year, but he didn't really add much overall. It, Sammy Watkins was not this huge difference maker. Yeah, he did make a couple plays. He did, for sure. But he was not this huge difference maker. And he was oh, yeah, we got to bring Sammy. Well, there's no way that Sammy Watkins can't come back. No. We saw that throughout the season, like, especially toward the end of the season. Like, oh, no, Sammy, yeah, he ain't coming back here. As a matter of fact, like, you will see so many times when Sammy Watkins would be suited up, he would be sitting right there on the sideline. Just chilling. They wouldn't, Ravens wouldn't even put him out there. So they must have known something. But, so like with Sammy Watkins, no, nah, I, I wouldn't bring him back. Next question came from my guy, Greg. He said, good morning. Eric DaCosta should trade Marquise Brown for my draft picks. All right, let's, let's try to continue, but I'm already off board with this. Anyway, he said, granted, Brown has speed, but his hands are garbage. Our wide receiver corp would be dominant with Landry, Bateman, Duvernay, and Prochet. Uh, here's another thought. Maybe we could offer Brown in a trade to move up in the draft so we could pick Kyle Hamilton, the safety, from Notre Dame. Go Ravens. Take care. No. No. I, I, I disagree. Now, that, as opposed to the last question, because the last question was saying that removing Sammy Watkins would be taken away from the No, this would be taken away from the Ravens. Now, we know Hollywood. He, he's had his fair share of drops for sure. Um, but I'm hoping that just like with Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews, he had his fair share of drops in year three and then he turned it down a lot in year four. So hopefully with Hollywood, he can follow that same path. Um, but having somebody who was a thousand yard receiver, we know it, it took a lot longer than it should have. If Lamar would have been playing, he would have got there a long time ago. But it's OK. That didn't happen. We can't really talk about the coulda, woulda, shouldas. Um, but with Hollywood Brown, um, if you take him away that would be taken away from Ravens offense. Now, of course, you could go get another speedster in the draft and whatnot, but you already got one. You can, you should add another one. You should, I feel like, again, add that big body wide receiver, uh, that physical guy who could go up and get it, that still got the burners too, um, and just 
make make the Ravens wide receiver room that much richer. I told y'all, first three rounds, it's happening. The next question came from Den. He said, Hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and the fam. With Lamar Jackson not getting a contract extension after three years like Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, I don't think he <laughs> he said <laughs> I don't think he should give the Ravens one dollar worth of a discount because since they won't pay him before they absolutely have to. I don't think he should take any less than he can get on the open market. What do you think? I, I would agree with you. He, um, you can't do discounts because if you do a discount now, you're going to be doing discounts forever. This question came from my boy Isaiah G. He said, hey, I hope all is well with you and the family. I have such high hopes for next season with our roster, but I fear Greg Roman may slow us down from getting to the level of someone like the Chiefs. Uh, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. I, I just wanted to be to where Greg Roman he has everything that he needs uh, to be for the Ravens to be as successful as they possibly can. So there will be no excuses from anybody. None for Giro. None for Lamar. None for Hobbs. None for the Cos. None for none for anybody. So everybody can be fully equipped, and hopefully everybody can stay healthy. But I want everybody to be fully equipped, so the Ravens they can know exactly where they need to move. Uh, going forward but I, I do still think that with uh with them bringing in t martin and keith williams uh that does say a lot about greg roman's future next question came from my guy frankie c he said uh with the Bengals having been in the super bowl do you think the ravens would try to copy them like how they got jamar chase from lsu uh to match joe burrow so pretty much could you see us trying to get lamar uh his oc from louisville thanks for your time and keep up the great work um I, I would love if they Ravens just went really like overkill on offense, like obviously fixing that offensive line, but really having like three potential number one wide receivers to be on the field at the same time. And then Mark Andrews, too. And then whoever you got at running back, J.K. Gus, whoever. I, I, I would love that just to because um, it's mismatches all day. And you see like Ravens. We, we, we talk about the Ravens with the offensive line. We, we've been talking about that for a long time. And it is true, the offensive line wasn't good. But the Bengals, they they just, they had a terrible offensive line. I think Burrow got sacked the most times in the league, right? Something like that. And they made it to the Super Bowl. So, with Ravens, like, uh, yeah, that, that, that shows adjustments right there. That's all, that's all adjustments, straight up. That's adjustments. Now, not saying that you should be like, all right, we're going to neglect the offensive line. No, 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 no. Still go for it. But, like, Ravens, <laughs> they got to step this thing up, man. And the last question on this episode came from my boy uh, Gold Morano. He said, Graven, please forgive me for my persistence. I know that I keep beating this horse, but I can't help noticing that the two best teams in the Super Bowl just happen to have the two best wide receivers in the league. Chase, Jamar Chase, and Cooper Cup. Coincidence? I think not. We have a great supporting cast, but we're not there yet. Yes, the QBs are also elite, but even the last time the Rams went to the Super Bowl, they had Isaac Bruce and Torrey Holt. I'm feeling more convinced than ever that elite wide receivers are the key to Super Bowl victories. The Rams left tackle is 40 years old. Uh, left tackle is obviously a very important position, but that position doesn't have to be filled with a team's first round selection based on what the Rams have in place. Uh, you must invest heavily into your offense. A quote from Engraven. <laughs> he said this. Excuse me. This is what we need. I ain't even had breakfast yet. I'm over here burping. He said this is what we need. A wide receiver who's 6'2", 6'3". His body fat is 12%. Ooh, you making me look at myself now. Like, hold up now. Body fat. But um, then he talked about they need to be from anywhere from 215 to 220 pounds. Uh, their 40 yard dash needs to be either four, from a 4'2 to, to a 4'35. A uh, vertical leap needs to be 38 inches to 42 inches. They need to be able to squat 405 pounds or more. Catches with his hands and not his body. That's true. Strong willed ball hawk and injury history zero. Love that. Love that. Um, and yeah, Ravens do. They, again, I keep saying it myself too. Again, first three rounds. Uh, because you you really want to take this offense over the top, man. You want to take it over the top. You try with Sammy Watkins. No, no, no. He tried with some other guys here and there. You had Willie Sneed in here. You had uh, Seth Roberts for a little bit. You had Des Bryant. Um, but, yeah, it's been rough for the Ravens. And now that's, that's only recent history. Um, and not that those guys were bad. Uh, it just just really didn't work out like that. Uh, so, yeah, man. Um, when when you talk about these, these uh, attributes... Um, so you're obviously looking for a taller guy. So yeah, I could agree with that. Um, 215 to 220 pounds. So 
Not tiny, not huge, but still got some good weight on him. 40-yard dash, so you want him to be fast. He got to have some good speed, so yeah. Uh, vertical leap, 38 inches to 42 inches, so he got to be able to jump out the gym. Okay, but the squat, that's what the one I like the most. He got to be able to squat 405 pounds, so you want somebody that's strong too. And then you talked about catches with his hands and not his body. That's so important, uh, but also strong-willed and a ball hawk. So, yes, yeah, somebody that's going to go and get it. They're going to go and get it. And strong will, that means, oh, oh, a cornerback's right there and he's going for the ball too. Well, you know what? I'll let him have it. No, you go get it. And if you don't, you can't get it, you make sure that that cornerback can't get it. If you got to do offensive pass interference to stop an interception, okay, so be it. If you got to just throw your body into them, drop a little shoulder like you were safety at that moment, then so be it. But you need to do everything that you can do so they can't do anything. You know what? I decided we're going to do a little bonus question on this episode. This next last question for real it came from my boy Justin. He said, I was sitting at work thinking, what happened to the explosive Ravens? Joe Flacco with his Hail Mary in a divisional game. Ray Lewis and Ed Reed probably every game. And even Lamar with his crazy runs. I even miss Mark Ingram running all over people. The explosiveness has been lost and it was not just this season, but last season was a little dim for them as well. I think uh, having this number 14 pick could give us a chance to get an explosive player like we have been needing. Lamar will stay explosive, but all of that comes with the people around them. I love you guys, the team. Keep it clean. And like the Chiefs, uh, when it came to their playoff hopes, I'm out. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a really, really good point. Uh, they they were missing that. They have been missing that. Now, early on in the season, it, it, it was happening here and there. There were some explosive plays. I remember week one against the Raiders with Lamar. He's scrambling around for like 20 minutes. Then he finds Hollywood in the back of the end zone. That was an explosive play. Um, even in that same game, there was a big catch to Sammy Watkins. Uh, and then we see um, in the Lions game, well, that, that game was pretty slow uh, until the very end. He got a fourth and 19, and then you throw to uh, Sammy Watkins, and he ends up catching that big play. And then, of course, the 66-yard field goal. And then even the week prior to that uh, in the Chiefs game, Lamar with the jump pass to Hollywood, and they, they had a lot of explosive plays. Well, yeah, they had some explosive plays in that one. Um, obviously that, that Tyson Williams big run It was getting ready to be a touchdown And got the ball knocked out But then Devin Duvin They said okay we're we gonna finish this And he caught it Caught that fumble for the uh, the touchdown So um, yeah man They uh, But then in, in the Denver game Of course Hollywood That was his little bounce back game uh, And there were, there were some explosive plays throughout But yeah they, they started to They started to lack Those explosive plays They started to um, The explosion sort of got turned off so yeah, they do need that. That's why I say overkill on offense. Shout out to Graven.